Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, O gracious God, for being such a wonderful Father to us. We thank you for Yeshua to bring us a prayer that we could pray, that we can continue, O gracious God, to follow you. And so, gracious Father, we pray for everyone that's here, everyone that's on the way, and as we continue through this uh, portion of Scripture, we ask that you will teach us by your Spirit that we will continue to follow you day by day. In the precious name of Yeshua, if you all agree, say amen. Hallelujah. Um, as we look at the Scriptures today, um, okay, you got 8-7. Um, okay, we, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. Uh, it, can, can we get the 8-2, I mean, no, 4, 2-4, um, yeah, 2-4, and that will help me a lot on that. Well, I mean, uh, okay, all right, yes, uh, to uh, verse 4, uh -huh. and uh, that, that would help us to connect, okay. In this portion of uh, scripture, it, it's helping us to see how we must continue to follow what the Lord is saying and doing. It says, then <clears throat> they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them ability uh, for speech. Now this is, this is uh, a different translation, uh, but it still tells us the same thing. Uh, it is just so good that we <clears throat> continue to see exactly what the scriptures is telling us because as God is leading his people, he, he's bringing us to a place where evangelizing will be made easier. Amen? He did not leave us without help and guidance. And this is one of the keys that the church is missing today, is we are still having church but we are not moving mostly by spirit. And this is one of the things that is hindering the church today. Because when Yeshua left, he t gave them some instructions. First he breathed on them, then he gave them instructions. And this means that the church today is supposed to be very, very active in their communities. And then uh, to the utmost parts of the world, uh, this is uh, one of the keys about this entire thing. And it's a shame that we are not taught in our churches to do so. Uh, we find other ways of doing things and we choose what kind of denomination we want to uh, be in and it's hindering really the things that God really set forth for us to do. And so as we begin to look at this, um, we are seeing that 
as I said before, they've come out of their communal situation and they are beginning to spread. Uh, the Lord wants to take the world because God so what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will have what? Everlasting life. And we don't expect for God to use the same uh, methods that he used in the beginning for the church uh, or, or before the church for the church to take hold of that and continue that without taking the world if he truly loved the world. Amen? So this is so key. I would like to go to uh, uh, chapter 8 now and verse 16 because we want to talk about some things dealing uh, with this uh, so we can continue uh, as we uh, have the commentary here. Okay. Is that 8, 816 now, please? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, uh, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this is um, a very key for us to begin to see that some of them had come to the Lord, but they had not uh, been baptized in the Holy Spirit. In other words, they did not have the helper. Amen. Y'all hear that? See, this is the key because we all need help. I mean, when you were born in this world, you needed help. So you had your mother and father. God has never left anybody alone. Amen? Once he bring you into the world, you have help. God saw to that. He's a good God. Amen? And so as we get grown now and we're going to do his work, he gives us uh, a portion of the Spirit of God that we are able to operate for evangelism in the house of the Lord. Amen. Wouldn't it be a shame for him to uh, say that he loved the world and wouldn't do anything about it and wouldn't give us any help to be able to do it? I don't know what we would do. Amen. So, not only did he give us instructions, but he gave us power to help us. And uh, as we have talked about it many times before, dunamis power, uh, in other words, we used to say dynamite power, which is translated about. And what we should understand is that in order to receive that in the churches today, you have to come by Lashon. Your tongue has to be controlled before you can actually operate in what the Lord gives us. It brings us to a point of humility. And here's where we are having a problem. And because of the fact today <clears throat> we are having so many people in the church who are beginning uh, to do very well in academics, uh, but they are beginning to think for themselves rather than think the way God want us or the way God is leading us to think. And this is a, 
a real, real problem. And this is another reason why we have so many denominations, because many of us never get to the point that we want to humble ourselves enough to receive something unintelligible to say uh, that you don't understand it and your particular people you're talking to might not understand it. When you're learning, uh, of course, through academics, that you're supposed to know. Amen. You see, and many of us, I think, the whole church need to come together in some way, all the leaders, and finalize this thing and stop piecemealing it. Where some churches are operating this way and some churches are operating that way. God has uh, given us his word for us to follow his word for all churches to operate the same way. Amen? Come on, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We got one book. Why are we having so many problems? It's because man is thinking after he gets to a certain point in his life, he's thinking that he sees something different. But God is the one who is leading, and he leads by his spirit. Amen? And it's a, it's a real shame because <clears throat> one time in the seminaries, they used to teach the Hebrew so that people will understand perfectly what they were supposed to do. But then as they began to turn them out faster, of course, they put the Hebrew aside and got to something more uh, closer to English. And of course, the Greek, uh, they began to do that, which we know uh, that this happened with the New Testament. And of course, uh, everybody can, can learn that a little faster, okay? But we have to understand that if you want to really get back to the essence of this thing, it's, it's where the Lord uh, was and how he came about, okay? <clears throat> so how many know we should follow the Lord? Amen. He is the Savior. He is God in the flesh. Amen. How many know the word became flesh and dwell among us? See, this is very key. We got to make sure that we put this whole thing together and stop piecemealing. Amen. All right. This is... Uh, such a key with us. Now, as we look at the next verse, let's go to 10, uh, chapter 10, and verse 44. If we can uh, begin to see more of that, please. Uh, this is such a key for evangelism, because that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. He's to help us to be able to know some things that we would normally know. Uh, and we might meet a stranger, amen, uh, that is of a different language. But God can give it to you exactly what to say, a message, and it can be translated by that person that you're talking to in their language and get the message from God. And they would then even ask you, uh, how did you know that? Come on now. See, God has a way, doesn't he? 
And, and uh, <clears throat> this, these are the keys that we really need in the church today. God wants to give us, uh, uh, like he, give it to us like he did in the book of Acts. If you read the book of Acts, God was helping them all kinds of ways. Because when they got in trouble in their particular community and they went to jail, God would get them out of jail. Come on, somebody. God has never left us alone. The church ought to be operating where we are able to take this message to the ends of the world. And so moving into evangelism, moving in this particular way, we have to rely on God all the time. That's, that's what this thing is about. Okay, uh, so we didn't read this yet, did we? Uh, it says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Now this was a, a, a group of course, uh, that we are finding out that was beginning to come into the Lord and wanted to continue to carry the word, but they needed the helper. Amen? And that's, that's what this is talking about. And of course, I know that's launching a long way from chapter 2 into chapter 10, but we're just giving you, we're just brushing this thing to show you that the God, God kept on moving whether they did or not. And don't you know what's happening today? God is still moving whether the church move or, or not. And so see this, this is what we got to get in our heart and in our mind. We got we to gotta understand that God wants us to take the world. God doesn't want us just to stay in Petersburg. Come on, somebody. And uh, it, it's amazing how we can get in a fellowship, get in a church, and just stay there and stay there and stay there. And some of the people in the churches never think about the work of the church. I'm talking about the real work. I'm not talking about uh, using the broom and, <laughs> you know, that kind of work. Amen. I'm talking about the real essence of what God wants us to do. And so we need the guidance of God, and it, he's doing it by his spirit. Come on now. And we find that, I'm so thankful we can find it out in the scriptures, how that he uh, began to reach other groups, okay? And this is one of the groups uh, that was being approached. Okay, can we also go to 1115, which is the next chapter, 1115. Amen. <clears throat> okay, 1115 says, and as uh, I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. And the beginning there is going back to Shavuot, the day of, we call, Pentecost in the Greek, amen? So this is, this is so important that we begin to see God is doing it the same way every group that accepts it, he does it the same way. He doesn't change it. No, yeah, that's what the Bible has always said. God changes not but he keep on teaching 
And uh, what is happening <clears throat> is God is ever revealing. Come on now. He's ever re revealing, but he's still doing the same thing. He's the same God. And what he did with Moses and Abraham and all of them back there, he's still doing it today. But the only thing about it now, he has given it now to the individual uh, saint rather than the just the prophet or somebody like that. Amen? Uh, now, so the Holy Spirit's been moving all the time ever since creation. Come on now. And we got to understand what kind of God we got. God is spirit. He, he, he doesn't change. And so he made us human. And we got to understand the difference between operating as a human and what he wants us to go into, go into spirit. Amen? And this is the way we need to operate, especially his children. I'm not talking about the world now. I'm talking about those who are his. Amen? So this is, is, is the key, and many of us have a problem because we start stumbling on Lashon. Uh, and, and I'm so glad that God did, did it the way that he did it because now you get true saints. Because if you try to lift up yourself, what happened is that you will eventually fail. And if you're crooked, you will eventually fail. But if you are true with him, thank God for the true saints. If you're true with God, then God can move you and take you uh, and make your name great like he did Abraham. Amen? How many know Abraham had to follow God? Moses had to follow God. All the saints had to who do what? Follow God. And what do we have to do? We have no right to do it any other way. But we got to stay humble. The way up in God is down. In the world, okay, be who you can be. With your intellect, fine. But when you're talking about following God, you got to humble yourself and stay humble. And when you do that, God will use us mightily. And this is, this is such a key uh, to moving in the Holy Spirit. Don't ever put yourself out there. Because if you do, you're, you're asking for failure. Amen? All right, so uh, that was 1115. Uh, uh, it's, it says right here, that's a small portion there. Uh, it says, um, a pouring out of the gift. Uh, and look, look at uh, 1045, please. And we'll get some reading uh, a little later after this section. Okay. 1045. We're just talking about this thing because this is so important for evangelism. You'll wonder why they were able to bring in one or two and then after a while 3,000. Come on now. It was the Holy what? The Holy Spirit to bring in uh, 3,000, amen, at one time, all right? And, and God can do it again, <laughs> anywhere. All right, uh, Acts 10, 45, it says, and they of the circumcision, 
which believed were astonished. Uh, as many as came with Peter, uh, because that on the Gentiles, on the who? You notice it's moving from the Jew to the Gentile. And the Gentiles supposed to take it to all the Gentiles. Amen? But he started with the Jew. Amen? The Hebrew, the Israelite, the Jew. Amen? Uh, it's, it's so simple. All we got to do is follow his steps. Amen? Uh, <clears throat> all right, so the Gentile. Also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So... Uh, and as we talked about it before, it's all done the same way. He does not change. Amen? And so why are we having such a fuss, such an argument? And some people are <clears throat> against Pentecostals. Some people are against people who just sit in church and, and be sad, <laughs> you know? But if we understood the scriptures, we'll understand that God made us to be able to handle it all. But we got to follow the Lord. You're not on your own. You always have him for your helper. Amen? The scripture said long before the Holy Ghost came that he is our helper. Uh-huh. If you need help, call on God. That was long before the Spirit came. I mean the Spirit in the way that it came. All right? This is, this is very, very important. But because of the fact we are so human, and I've said it so many times, we are so used to acting so human until we uh, stay that way, even try to do it with the Holy Spirit, and we fail. But we got to change and be more like him. He wants us made into his image, not ours. Amen? And uh, in fact, uh, <clears throat> if I can uh, quickly get this, I think it's very important. For He made us in his image and in his likeness. And uh, that's Betzel Menu. Kidmutenu, image and likeness. So we are supposed to operate on the earth as a human until we understand who is really our God and Father. Therefore, then when that happened, we can start operating in his image. Not just mama and daddy. And see, we, we are having, we're having a problem doing that. But, but we've got to be able to understand exactly what God is, wants to use us for. Amen. Otherwise, we can't get it. Amen. All right. So, uh, that's, that's a key also. Uh, I have one more verse here, and then I'm going to get some of the commentary. Uh, would you go to 19, Acts 19, 6, please? 19, 6. I'll tell you this, uh, as, as we begin to get into this, and as we, uh, each one of us, being filled with the Spirit of God, going out two by two. Amen. Amen. And we began to see how God is going to use us. If God doesn't give the answer for uh, the people out there by one of us, he put two together, he'll give it to the other one. Amen. 
and you'll be able to answer some questions you, you know you didn't know. <laughs> Come on now. But you've got to understand that it is God who's doing it. It's not you. It's not me. Come on now. This is such a key. My goodness gracious. Okay, now in 196 it says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake uh, with tongues, or talking about language, and prophesied. Okay, this is, this is key. When the Spirit of God began to move, uh, he knows what to tell us. He knows everything. There's nothing God doesn't know. He knows our very thoughts. Come on, no. Come on, somebody. It's a shame that we think we know more than God sometimes. Amen. We might not say it like that, but we are sometimes thinking we are so great. Come on now. But we have to understand that it is still humility. Always stay in humility. Now, a lot of people think this day and time that when you are uh, trying to be humble, uh, they think that that's weakness. But they don't realize that that's the strongest person you got among you. Come on, somebody. Then you have to understand you have an obedient person. Huh? In your midst. This is, this is such a key. I wish we had time just to just go through different situations in the scripture or anywhere else and see that it's always the humble person that makes it through. Come on now. And look at Yeshua. He carried his life all the way through. He went to the cross. But where is he now? Huh? Come on now. And he's still calling the shots. Ain't nobody. Look. <laughs> He gave up his life so he could help give us something. Come on now. And so these are the kinds of keys that are so important. And the more I look at spiritual things, I, I say to myself, Lord, and I look at the church, and I say, my goodness, I can see why we are not where we ought to be. By now, we should have taken Petersburg. But everybody got their own way. Their own way. We, it's hard for us to follow what God has given us. It's very hard. And uh, I, I tell you folks, uh, it's a shame before the true and the living God to say that he's your Lord and yet you're doing something else that he didn't tell you to do. Come on now. So uh, I, I, I wish that we could actually come to that fact to be what God wants us to be. Now, would you give us something on the commentary, please? As soon as they were filled, yeah. the 120 began to speak with other tongues or languages. Yeah. This speaking came as the Spirit proceeded 
to give them utterance to yeah. speak out. Yeah. They spoke, but the words did not come from their mind or thinking. Yeah, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. The words did not come from what? Their mind or their thinking. Then, let's see something else. Would you go on, please? Through the Spirit, they spoke out boldly. Did you hear that? Through the what? Through the Spirit, they spoke out boldly. See, when you get the Spirit of God speaking through you, I mean, you feel that surge, man. <laughs> Come on, you can speak loudly now. Come on now. Because you know you're speaking from him. You're not speaking from you. Come on now, and you're sure of what you're saying. Amen? Amen? This is the reason why uh, some time ago, uh, knowing that we were going this way, I said, I, I, I got the books, notebooks, and I said, hey, everybody who want to hear from God begin to do what? Start practicing. Sit before God. Listen. Ask him. Come on now. But how many take the time since we got nine to five, we got, you know, you, all the time moving, you got your date book, and you, you're so busy doing this and doing that, but you don't realize to take time with the Lord is to save time in your life. Uh, I hope y'all caught that. Amen. God can help you to save all the time in the world. But you've got to give, it, give him the time. And then he'll keep you where you need to be. All right, go further, please. This is the one sign of the baptism in the spirit that was repeated in Acts 10, 44 through 47, and yes. Acts 19, one through seven. Yes. All right. That's Acts 10, 44 through 47. Would we go, please help us to go there, please. Amen. 10, 44 through 47. And, uh, and then we'll see that, and then we'll see what happened in chapter 19, because... This is so key. Folks, we got a helper that will not fail you. You got to be successful. That's, that's the only kind of God we got. You're not on your own. Come on now. This, this is so key. Amen. All right. Uh, okay. That's what we wanted. Huh? Yeah. 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 yeah uh, 1044 through 47. Uh huh. All right. Uh, it says now, and they of the circumcision which believe were astonished, uh, as many as came with Peter. Now, how many Peter, no, Peter was, was kind of the, one of these brassy men, you know. <laughs> he would readily speak. Hey. Uh, all right. All right, will you give me that, please? All right, okay. All right, okay. All right, I'll take it there. It says, while Peter yet spake with these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Amen? All right? And then it says, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. And see, they hadn't been with Peter all the time, but this time they were with Peter, and they were Jews. And you notice what happens. It says, with Peter, because 
that on the Gentile also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They had never seen that before because it hadn't been long uh, since Pentecost. Shavuot, ought. Okay? It hadn't been that long. So the Jews were astonished because they felt like we're the only ones. Come on, no. How many know that humanly we can get like that? Man, you, I mean, you get a brand new house. The first thing you say, ha, ha, I got something somebody else ain't got. That is not the way to look at that. <laughs> what is wrong with us? We ought to, at a point like that, wish that everybody had a new house. <laughs> Come on now. Not just, I got one, I got something somebody else don't have. Come on, that's not, that's not life. Not the life of the Christ. Come on, somebody. We ought to be so much like the Lord until we will help somebody get what we got. Listen, God raised them up that way. If you check the book of Acts, they are, be, I mean, really understand it. That's the way they had all things common. They would sell what they had and help somebody else to have something. I dare you ask the church to do that today. No. Are you, are, are, you hearing, are you hearing me, brother? I dare you to ask the church to do that today. And Christ gave his what? His whole life. And I keep telling them, listen, we got to love one another. I don't care what you think. I don't care how you think. You got to love one another. If a problem occur, go to the person, get it straight. When you get in your own self, you mess up the spirit of the whole household and the household of God. Somebody better help me right here. This is hurting the church more than anything we can phantom. We ought to be doing things nice for each other. Don't wait until somebody give you a fake holiday to do it. We ought to be loving one another that the Spirit of God can work all through us. All the time. Come on, somebody. This is so key. I wish we could get it. And we don't need to be in a hurry to do anything. Take your time. Hear from God. And when you move, you know you're right. Come on now. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else, and I'll just say this uh, in, in passing to understand this, because when we begin to move out, somebody might be sick. Somebody might be uh, needing help one way or another. So when we go, we ought to be prepared to sort of help them the best that we can. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It sounds like all things common, doesn't it? See, God has never changed. Come on. 
But the people with all things common began to come up with that because of the fact they had the Spirit of God, not because they were in their humans, human self. You know what I mean? That's the problem. All of us, we have come up in a society, we are nine to five or whatever, and we are just working to try to do something for ourselves and look at the problem we are having with our government right now. It's hard to even get the truth out of either party. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Or is it your mass? Come on. Come on, somebody. If we would continue to go the way of the Spirit of God, we will have this thing solved and we'll be able to move forward. See, now we're getting down to the nitty, uh, <laughs> what, what they call it, nitty gritty. <laughs> That's what the world talks about. We begin to get down to the core of how this thing's supposed to really move because if we don't move in the spirit of God, we will never be able to accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish because God is not going to be a part of it. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to give us the key because we're going to try to evangelize. And God will help us and give us guidance and direction. And as we follow the Spirit of God, no one, once they find out that the Spirit of God is moving in you, won't nobody shut the doors and pull down the blinds when you're coming. Because when they find out what happened to the last person you went to in that neighborhood, they'll sling the door wide open. Anybody with me? Anybody thinking this way? Come on. I'm talking about thinking Bible now. I'm not talking about doing it the way you want to do it. See, these things are very, very key. Amen? All right. Uh, okay, let's, it says, For they heard them speak uh, with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter. Let's see what Peter says. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Well, this is, <clears throat> this is uh, what Peter was one of these guys that was rough. But when he began to humble himself, things began to happen for him. Come on, somebody. How many know Peter had that kind of uh, brazen? Well, well, yes, it... it, it it, 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 yeah, there you might say that it is needed, but listen, God's going to get his work done whether you get it done or somebody else who act more like Christ. It's always with love. You have to temper It's your got to be with love. With love. Yes. Because that's the foundational character of Yahweh. You got love. it. Yes. It's got to be with love. See, this is the key. Don't ever get to the point that you think you are doing it by what you want to do. Because that is not, okay, praise God. That is not the way it's supposed to be done. Now, uh, uh, did y'all get anything? All right, amen. All right. 